Welcome to Ask the Pro. I'm Chris Dufay, and this is where I'm here to give you what's needed to create the online business, the money, and importantly, the freedom that you want. The Ask the Pro show has been upgraded, and it's also got a new home, which is turningproacademy.com. Now, if you go to turningproacademy.com, all the podcast episodes, video episodes, and in-depth articles are there waiting for you right now. Plus, if you go to turningproacademy.com forward slash start here, then you can get access to the free coaching guides. So if you want to know how to double or triple your clients in just a few weeks, or if you want to know how to start and grow your online business, be sure to go to turningproacademy.com forward slash start here to get access to it now. Welcome to Ask the Pro. I'm your host and your coach, Chris Dufay, and this is where I'm going to give you what's needed to create the online business, the money, the freedom, the success, and the life that you want. Now, there is no doubt I absolutely love recording this episode for you. I'm bringing back on Dr. Bob Rakowski, which I believe is a genius and a great man. When we were chatting about what we're going to record this episode on for you, he brought up the power of positive psychology. And with this being something I'm really delving into and loving at the moment, and being able to chat with Dr. Bob and this conversation is an absolute mind blower. This conversation was originally recorded for the My Body Blend podcast, but this is so applicable for what we cover and what we focus on here at Ask the Pro that I want to share this with you. We delve into what's the number one starting block for you to achieve the happiness and the feeling 100 times better right now and how to get it. How positive psychology works in a clinical standpoint and what science is really showing about this. How this is so much more than positive thinking and how you can change your beliefs and the story that you have about yourself and what that really impacts. How you can totally see things differently and how this will have a physical adaptation, either positive or negative, depending on how you react to it. How nutrition plays so powerfully into this and not in a complex way. He breaks it down so well, especially as the power of superfoods and getting your micronutrition and focusing on your gut health and a ton of great resources. Now, this episode is brought to you by My Body Blends and my favorite, the Superfood Elixir. So, if you want the fuss-free and proven programs, the guides, and the world-class products to transform your body and health, be sure to head on over to mybodyblends.com and tune into the My Body Blends podcast show as every new episode is coming on each and every Monday for you. Now, if you are loving this, then make sure you subscribe and don't miss out. There is so much to come on Ask the Pro, and I would really love for you to give me some feedback as well. You can click right on over right now. It will put a huge smile on my dial, because I want to be able to eat up the feedback that you've got to also keep giving you what you want. That's why it's called Ask the Pro, because you've got to ask so I can answer. Though, to really make sure that you get the most out of you being here with me, Right now, you need to click on over to chrisdufay.com. That's chris, D-U-F-E-Y.com. Right now, waiting for you, I've got loaded up, is the free guide to the trainings that are coming straight out of the Pro Circle. And I continue to make sure these are updated for you each and every time. So depending on whether you want to grow your following, depending on whether you want to double or triple your clients, or you want me to show you how to start and grow your online business, go right now to chrisdufay.com forward slash start here. So don't be a peanut and miss out on that. Right there, I'm gonna be walking you through with the actual workshops that all the other coaches and trainers are using literally around the world right now to build their dream fitness business. So chrisdufay.com forward slash start here is the best next step you can go from this episode, but I really wanna bring on Dr. Bob Rakowski right now. He's a legend, you're gonna see absolutely why I think so highly of him, and there is a lot of takeaway points right here. So make sure you get in contact with me, jump on at chrisdufay.com or jump on social after this. Let me know what you've gotten out of this episode. Let me know what more you want as well so that I can bring it. Any questions, please send them on over and there's going to be coming with the answers. Enjoy. Dr. Bob Rokowski, one of 
the most favorite people that I have on this actual earth right now. Every time I talk to you, mate, I am absolutely walking away a better person. So I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out and being here. Hey, right back at you. You know, I, I don't know if the world knows, but I believe you woke up at three o'clock this morning <laughs> on your mission on your mission to make the world better. And you know what? There's not a lot of people that'll do that. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It has been a very early start this morning and I'm buzzing with energy. So this is a good thing. And I'm buzzing even more because we've chatted a few times and they've all been absolutely outstanding. The feedback has just been just phenomenal. But today's episode, we're going to be delving into some deeper and to some topics that I'm like, personally, I'm really loving. And you were like, hey, you're running a seminar today. So you're about to walk into and blow up even more people's minds on a face-to-face level. So we can do this right now. But even before we jump into that right now, Bob, who is Bob and why are you so phenomenal? Let the listener know. Wow. What, well, what an awesome question. So Bob's a work in progress. So I'm glad that you think that uh, the work is doing pretty well. But I you know what? Good. Uh, I'm a guy that had a pretty simple background. Uh, I had two loving parents that are still best friends, married after 55 years, so I couldn't ask for a better environment to grow up in. Uh, They had everything with the exception of financial freedom. Mm -hmm. And so I saw that to be a major stress in their world. And I said, you know what? They're gifted. They're talented. They could have done it. Why didn't they? And they advised me. You know what? They said, son, find something you're passionate about. So I'm passionate about health. I'm passionate about sharing. I'm passionate about helping people grow mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, socially, financially, impactfully. And in terms of physical wellness, like eating right, drinking right, thinking right, moving right, sleeping right, pooping right, talking right. But I'm a guy who's listened to some pretty good people, uh, who's made a few mistakes, got my nose bloodied many, many times in life and can get my black belt at age 50. Uh, because it's fun to do, and I test for my second degree this year. But I'm I'm a guy that loves life, loves sharing, and and my best better be still coming for decades yet to come, as I know yours will be. I absolutely love that, and I, I never actually knew that. And very similar to myself, my folks they actually so when I was born, my parents were 17 years old, and they're still together today, and they're phenomenal. I have a great relationship with my parents. But very similarly, we grew up without having a lot of money. And I saw my parents do a lot and sacrifice a lot for me. And I I owe them a lot. And I'm very thankful and loving for, for what they have done. And I remember the same thing. My, my parents said to me, whatever it is that you do, be the best at it. Just do your best. Because if, it, if you want to be a clown, be the best clown. Because then you're always going to be able to have a great impact with it. And I was like, okay, well, that's really good. And the the exact same, the freedom with finances, life, location, all these kind of things, it was kind of becoming of, okay, I saw what my parents were doing and I wanted to be able to take that and really use that and grow. And obviously why we're talking today. Now, I would love to be able to touch on just in case just in case someone doesn't know The Magnificent Seven, I would love for you to go on to The Magnificent Seven and then I would really love us to delve into what success from the inside out means to you. Sure. Uh, you know, it was a movie title years back, but I like the term so much. And and I do happen to think and acknowledge that seven is God's perfect number. So we got to come up with seven. So you've got to eat right, drink right, think right, move right, sleep right, poop right, and talk right every mm. single day. Okay, I absolutely love this because I feel like everyone can just take those seven right now and it's it's obvious, it's clear. If you start doing those seven things, start to take one right now and do it. And if it, am I not pooing right? Okay, why am I not pooing right? What are the things that we can start to do? And it's so impactful because when I learned this from you, I started to put this not into my own, but I started to put this into my practice with my own clients and members and the results was just absolutely tremendous. So that was easily something people can practically put into use. Now, what does success from the inside out mean to you? Well, it quite simply means that when we become our best self, we have a better way to contribute to the world and really a better way to handle what the world brings to us. And, and somewhere I've got a slide about who said it, but you know, you can rate people anywhere from a, a size 
I believe they said size one, but my scale always goes down to zero, uh, a size one to a size 10 person. And then you can read our problems the same way, size one to size 10. And so if you're a size two person and, and a size five problem comes along, look out, you know, then, then you're devastated by it. But yet if you're a size nine, you just kind of laugh at that size five and it's just, it's a normal way of going, you know? And uh, I was just watching, a, I, I love motivation uh, for a lot of different reasons, but I'll share a quote with you. Uh, they say, motivation is for amateurs, experts just show up. Uh. So the, the experts are going to do what they need to do, whether they feel like it or not. And, and I'd love to say that I'm in that category, and, and I, I do have the discipline to be in that category. But there's still these things that motivate you and get you to dig down just a little deeper, to work a little harder, to strive a little higher. And, uh, but it was uh, the video of uh, Mike Tyson and Buster Douglas. And I don't know if you know that story or if the world knows this, but, but Tyson was the most ferocious man on earth. And he was pummeling Buster Douglas. And he, he literally knocked him out, except that Buster Douglas was saved by the bell. Huh. And they would be saved by the bell in, in that particular circumstance. So Douglas got out of his corner and Tyson came out to kill him, but he met a completely different man. And the backstory is Buster Douglas's mother had told the world that Buster Douglas would beat Mike Tyson, but she died two days before the fight. Oh. And, and he sat in that ring and he said to himself in that corner, he says, I'm not going to let my mom down. Oh. He had a big enough why. Seems and then talk easy. about motivating, right? So whatever it takes to dig down deep into your soul I don't know, and I'll listen to a, a podcast with John Wooden because I've talked so much sports nutrition, and I've looked at the greatest coaches of all time, and most people say John Wooden. I don't know if people know who John Wooden was, but he won 10 championships in 12 years at UCLA College Basketball, won a record that still tans, stands today, 88 straight games. Um, but John Wooden said, don't, don't talk to me about giving 100%, because 100% is your last breath. Yeah. You know, we, we, I've never seen a man give 100%, and I don't believe it's possible unless you drop dead on a court. He says, I want my guys to drop just a little short of that. <laughs> you know, I want them to give as much as humanly possible and then take advantage of the compound effect because if you consistently work on your craft, hey, guess what? If you get just 0.03% better a day, at the end of a year, you're 100% better. When and you we take a guy like you. Yeah, I appreciate that. When you um, – what – I, I like how you said, like, if you're a size zero to a size 10 person. So there's obviously different factors to what make up that rating, let's say. Sure, sure. What would those factors actually be that you would identify? Well, okay, so it's going to go down to the Magnificent Seven, right? You, your physical health and wellness is going to be there. But let's go through now the seven areas of life, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, social, financial, impactful beings. Those are all things that we need to address. One of the greatest social scientists of all time is a guy named Abraham Maslow. And he created this hierarchy of needs, this nice pyramid at the base. It was, you know, your physiologic safety. If you're not safe, you're not going to think of anything else. But at the very, very top, he called it self-actualization. And in later writings, he called it transcendence, meaning standing for more than your own life, going beyond what, what you can do. And, and so the best and the biggest people I know stand for a cause much bigger than themselves. And that's something that can get you fired up. Okay. This is, this is something personally kind of hitting a heartstring with me because I've been doing a lot of thinking with what's my legacy? What is it that I'm leaving more? And it definitely started when I became a father and now with my two girls, I'm like, I want to be able to leave the world in a better place for them. So I kind of see them as that crux of where that motivation comes from is what you were just saying before. When it comes to being able to do bigger and better and beyond us, how do you coach someone through that? How do you kind of guide someone through that process? Well, it starts with an inventory. You know, you've got to take a personal inventory really in, in every area of your life. If, if you don't know where you are, then it's pretty hard to figure out what your next step is to get where you're going. So very, very simply, there's three things we need to know. One, where are you? Two, where do you want to be? And then what's the gap and, and the path, the plan to get there? And, and so it's best always to connect with people that have achieved what you want to achieve. You know, So sometimes people will admire people in business who have made a fortune, 
but yet they're divorced and alcoholic yes. and 75 pounds overweight. That's not the kind of person I want to mimic. You know, my mentors have this zest for life and this spirit of giving and this connection to a bigger and greater purpose. Like you said, make the world better. But you know what? When you make it better for your daughters, well, you make it better for every one of us. Yeah. And, and that's so beautiful. That's a really good point that you bring up is in you can have people crushing it in certain ways of life, crushing it in the business world, or maybe they're in great health, great shape, but then financially they're not that fantastic or they don't have the greatest relationships or spiritually they're just not connected. How do you help someone put those pieces of the puzzle together? And I'll I'll actually, I'll just tell a quick story. So I am uh, a head coach actually for the weight loss challenge that's running here in Bali at the moment. So the whole goal is to raise $100,000 for three different charities. And I was like, oh, I love this. I'll happily go in, let's do this. One of the guys doing the challenge, phenomenal person, he's 200 kilos on the dot, starting weight 200 kilos. So he's now four weeks in and he's lost a lot of weight and he's getting better. Very successful businessman. Has about 27,000 staff working for him. And then I said to him, I go, why don't you put the effort into your health than with your business because you clearly are very successful with your business. Why don't you put that same energy, focus, and willing to win into your health and your life? And like we got really deep into the conversation. Like we were, we were both crying at one point in the conversation when we first got together. How do you help someone go through that? You know, this basically the same way that you just did. Identify areas that they can win. Let them know that they're profoundly capable where they decide to be. Yeah. And then let's, you know, if you have a big enough why, the house take care of themselves. But, but people are capable. Now we got to figure out what is the block? What keeps you from moving forward? And how can we chisel away at that? What's a systematic way? So, you know, obviously you've made some great progress at, at four weeks and and I love it. That's that's a, that's a tough nut to crack, but yeah. get get some common ground, you know. And I, I'm one of those guys that knows knows absolutely beyond any doubt that anybody who makes up their mind to win can win, especially with the right coach. So you've got that other critical component, a great coach. So you know, if we start looking at the business world, it's been said that nobody wants a boss, but everybody wants a coach. And, and a coach is someone that can give you correction without you feeling bad about it or resentful, you know, and, and that's another John Wooden quote. You know, you want to be able to connect with people and say, uh, you know what, Chris, that uh, dozen donuts you had for lunch, that probably is not going to work in our best interest. So here's what I need you to do right now. You got to get in the gym and it's, it's about 30 minutes for every donut. So let's go to work, you know. And, and once they realize there's a price to pay, the coach is going to hold them accountable. Accountability mm-hmm. is big. Uh, then they can move forward. Um, now, the different the thing about the game of life, and I love great coaches, um, but they have another option, right? When, when people don't perform, they put them on the bench, you know? Like, you know what? You haven't earned your spot. Sorry, have a seat. We can't kick people out of life, but, mm, you know, sometimes, some way, they might just tell us, you know what, you, you've kind of haven't earned my my attention, my expertise, my extra efforts this week because you didn't show up with yours. But when you're back, I'll be back. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in a split with so much more for you. Now, I know you're listening and tuning in because you know how important your health is and how this can also catapult your business. This is why I'm very happy to say that this podcast is sponsored by My Body Blends and my favorite, the Superfood Elixir, the powerful greens drink. Now, this is designed specially to boost energy, aids detoxification, enhances the ability to burn fat, supports healthy carbohydrate metabolism, and best of all, is voted best tasting greens drink. Now, myself and the My Body Blends team are looking for ambassadors to join. So you and your clients get the health benefits plus adding in a strong income stream for you and your business. The ambassador program, which is by application only, means you get exclusive access to sell My Body Blends products like Superfood Elixir 
to your clients, plus giving you the special ambassador pricing and bonuses. So once you become an ambassador, you can join the other top health and fitness players that are adding thousands to their week's income. Now, there is only a limited number of ambassadors we are taking on board as this is a tribe leading the way together. So to apply and to join, go to mybodyblends.com forward slash ambassador or add the checkout code that is turning pro all one word when you're going to get your own superfood elixir to order plus you're going to get free shipping and a bonus to save yourself over 250 dollars instantly so just use that coupon code turning pro in the checkout and you can save over 250 right now all on mybodyblends.com okay this is fantastic it's kind of like when um when the student is ready, the mentor will come. And I also find that obviously, and this is to the truth, this is exactly why we're doing this right now. I wanted to create a platform to bring people such as yourself to be a coach in this 30-minute conversation. How can I have you distribute your wisdom and coach people to be able to be able to make better decisions? And this is kind of leading into where I wanted to take this was, how do you help people coach themselves? We, like 100% we know it's very important to have a mentor, it's very important to have a coach, but I feel like there's also an aspect of someone has to own responsibility for themselves as well and has to kind of um, parent themselves. How do you help someone do that? Well, one, it, it, what you just said is we're going to start some ground rules, right? And, and there's, there's a simple quote that says, every man is self-made, but only the successful will own up to it. Everybody else is blaming someone else. So when we sit down and have a conversation, yes. you know, if you succeed, it's entirely on your efforts. If you fail, it's entirely on your efforts. Yeah. So this concept of, ex- of extreme ownership. So I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to coach you. I'm going to guide you, but I can't do it for you. I can't do the push-ups for you. I can't go shopping for you. But w- when it comes to getting people actionable things that they can do. One of my favorite quotes is buy your willpower at the store. So you don't buy any junk. If it's not within your immediate environment, you're not going to eat it. Um, I heard a term and I love it. And I'm surprised I didn't come up with it decades ago, but the term is kitchen detox. Yes. So we want to get all this garbage out of our body, but let's get all the garbage out of our kitchen too. Now, there is going to be more effort because this good stuff doesn't have an eternal shelf life, a 10-year shelf life. You can't buy it and three months later eat it. The stuff that we're talking about eating, you got about three days. Yeah. So that means you've got to make consistent trips to the store. Now, this is where a guy like your friend that has you know 27,000 employees, likely some really good financial means, if I were him, I wouldn't even set foot in the store. Not until I was down much lower, I would send someone there for me with a with a list approved by you and you know when i talk to people about eating i I let them know listen i don't ever want you to go hungry because i don't like going hungry but people do not become obese on superfoods and organic vegetable lean clean meats you know i mean these are so satisfying that as a general rule we eat a whole lot less um i want to throw in since you're you're on this weight loss challenge which and and i saw your new podium and and all the people you're bringing in what a great service to the world I'm honored that you'd ask me, but there's this whole new concept that is so powerful, and, and that's of the microbiome, mm. uh, the bugs in our gut. So I'll, I'll give a title of a book. It's called 10% Human, and it's about you and I and the rest of our race. We are 10% human, and 90% of the DNA in our body is bugs. And so I would ask people at my seminars, you know, what does a gorilla eat? And, and the funny answer is a gorilla eats whatever he wants. But a gorilla eats leaves and bananas. And, and how does he put on 600 pounds of muscle doing that? And it's his microbiome. So they have bugs in their gut that you and I eat a salad. We're going to add bulk to our stool, and we may burn more calories chewing it than we actually get from the food itself. But the gorilla has bugs that break down that fiber that we can't digest into fatty acids. And what we get zero calories from, they may get 2,000. And that's how they can maintain that incredible mass. So we want to, and we know that these bad foods, and especially artificial sweeteners, it's yes. not nice to Mother Nature, feed the bad microbiome, 
which increase calorie absorption, increase inflammation, increase toxicity, decrease energy efficiency, decrease satiety, and it's just the, the horrible spiral in a direction we don't want to go. It is a soup of problems coming about right there. And okay, I love that you've brought this into the gut health because this is something I've been geeking out on a lot lately. And especially because it's like looking at how your foods are truly treating your body and what's going on. When you really put a food into your mouth, it's not about just the calorie or just the macronutrient of what's going on. It goes so much deeper. So when you walk someone through, Bob, how the importance of food and how that goes into relation, can you dive into that and kind of dissect that for the listener? Yeah, you know, one of the first things we have to do, and it's uh, almost like a withdrawal thing for a lot of people, because we know that their brain chemistry is altered. We know that processed foods literally are engineered to be addictive. That's a known fact at this point in time. We have flavor chemists that use over, um, you know, over a thousand chemicals, and the term is to hijack our brain. So whenever the brain chemistry is set by those chemicals and the dependence is created, they're going to have some withdrawal, and it's not going to be fun. And so I prepare them for it as best I can, I support their wonderful neurotransmitters as best I can, but reality is they've done some damage that will not be pain-free to get out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the best way to beat an addiction is essentially to beat it, to go and go cold turkey. And that's the way most people succeed. So I put them on a really intense one-week detox Mm -hmm. that starts getting us in the right direction. Um, And it's so strict that at the end of the week when we add back comprehensive fruits, vegetables, lean meats, stuff that are healthy for everybody they go wow this is this is nice i get a lot of variety and you know there's no doubt two three four days where people really struggle and go why am i doing this but after seven days they go you know what i'm glad i did then after 21 when those circuits are reset and that's what they estimate it generally takes about 21 days uh, then guess what they're in a better position to make better choices and i always tell people the more resilient you are the more balanced you are the healthier you are the more latitude you have in your choices. When you're sick, you know what? A little bit will throw you off. When you're healthy, you can handle that little bit, or at least most of us can't. But, you know, as part of my education, I studied Alcoholics Anonymous, which is really powerful, but they don't ever call themselves a recovered alcoholic. They call them recovering because with most of them, one little drink could throw them right back. So some some people may be that way with certain foods, uh, especially the process stuff. So if, if you know something that just keeps calling at you to, to make you go get it, get that out of your sight and never bring it into your life again. This is beautiful. I'd love for us to dive into, especially the process of the detox, because I learned this directly from you and it has had profound impacts of all of the clients and members I use this with. So how do you go through that process, that detox, and especially as in how are you nutritionally supporting your body, such as what you said, like with the neurotransmitters? Sure. So one, we, we certainly know that food right now, the, the data is clear. The Department of Agriculture has looked at food in the U.S. Now you're in a better part of the world, but they estimate because our soil is so depleted, it takes 30 elements to grow a healthy plant, animals and humans. They put three back in as fertilizer. We don't have enough nutrient value of our soil. So they estimate 99% of the population is depleted. So I've created a, a seven-tier food pyramid. At the base of the pyramid is food. Nice, really good foods. Eat like your ancestors ate, period. If it didn't exist 200 years ago, don't eat it. Next up the tier is going to be superfoods. So my favorite is Ganoderma, but there's things like goji berries and spirulina and different kelps. And even honey is considered on some list of superfood. Then after that, we're actually going to go to medical foods now or Mm. functional foods. Mm. So these are foods that they are processed. Sorry, we can't get by without supplementation, but these are proven to have guaranteed potency, guaranteed purity, proven effectiveness in human clinical trial with every nutrient recognized as safe. And I use medical foods that may drive liver detoxification, they may control inflammatory process, they may clear out heavy metals, they clear out, may clear out estrogens, or I could use a blend of these things. And after that, above as we go up the pyramid, we're going to get with a multivitamin, omega-3s, probiotic, and vitamin D, and those are the seven things that everybody needs. Food, superfood, medical food, multi, omegas, probiotics, vitamin D, and then we're there. Um, So I'm going to put people with all the nutrients that their body's going to need to clear all this garbage because it's very, very nutrient-intense. 
It's energy intense. It, it, it takes proteins actually to activate phase one liver enzymes and phase two, the conjugating substances or amino acids. And then we need water. And, and amazingly enough, we need to move and we need to sleep and all those magnificent seven have to come together. If we get a good, decent night's sleep, our body is in a much better sit position to detoxify. So to make that make sense, as I tell patients, if we're not running on rest and recovery, we're running on stress hormones. The body's chronic stress hormone is cortisol, and cortisol actually signals the body to shunt blood away from critical systems to muscles to fight or flee. And what a lot of people don't realize is the organ that gets most blood flow at rest is the liver. The one that gets second most at rest is the kidneys. Third is the brain. So the body shuts down our detox when we're not well rested. So well rested is a very important process. And then to take another step further, movement to a certain degree is the number one regulator of circadian rhythm. So I've, I've done a lot of delving into sleep because I bought a sleep seminar uh, just last weekend. And I literally read 250 of the latest and greatest studies over the last month. But, you know, you look at these areas of the world where they have 40 days of darkness or 40 days of light. If it were light that regulated our circadian rhythm predominantly, those people would be in big trouble. Yeah. But it's actually movement. And so we should move consistently during waking hours. Mm -hmm. And here's a little pearl for you. 200 years ago, they estimate the average person moved uh, 3,000 minutes a week. And they now suggest the average person, if they're physically active, moves 300 days a week. Wow. So we're just a fraction yes. of what we were. But constant movement during waking hours and then kind of wind down during sleeping hours. Supplement with the right uh, medical foods and diet and supplementation. And then when we come to brain neurotransmitters, there's several things that work well. Again, exercise is really, really powerful for those happy chemicals. But over the last handful of months, I've been studying deeper and deeper into meditation. And it's one of the most powerful ways to reset and normalize the body. Yes. And I all that. A, you just touched on so many awesome points right there. And it was it's really funny you bring up medical foods. I literally wrote down on my to-do list today to actually get um, a new batch delivered to me. So that's good that you brought that up. You've reminded me again. Thank you very much. When it comes to detox, just one point that you brought up. Obviously, phase two conjugation of the actual detoxification process is needed with amino acids. A lot of people are jumping up and down about uh, detox protocols, plans, cleanses, whatever it is, and not supporting with amino acids in the actual plan that they're doing. Can you walk through the problems with that? Because of, like, I, I, I just you go for it because sure. you are the master of this. Well, I'm going to go from it two different ways. So. The first part of liver detoxification are enzymes, and all enzymes are protein, the cytochrome P450 system. So we know that without adequate protein, just the P450 activity, first phase of liver detoxification, typically drops about 50% in 24 hours. In When we have a toxic molecule, let's just say that my fist is a toxic molecule, we open up a binding site, and this is actually more toxic, can do more damage, and then I'm going to neutralize it with something else to get it out of the body. It's the amino acid that neutralizes it. So you can either keep this toxic molecule floating around in your system way longer than it should, or where's your body going to get the protein if you're not putting it in? It's got to break down your lean tissue. Okay. And it will. It absolutely will. So I've seen people that have done these detoxes, and they have not walked out overall better than they walked in if they kept it on too long. But a lot of times they just at least have the good sense to give it up after three or four days. But when you look at the kind of talk, detox that I'm looking at, uh, the, the, mo the sickest patient that I've had did it three straight weeks, and it saved her life. Uh, but most people can make a pretty big dent in a week with the right detox protocol. Mm. Okay, this is really, really good. Now, the way you taught me um, detoxification and the process and what people need to go through, I'm going to share a quick story just to kind of really support this. Um, for the listener to be able to understand and put this into play. One of the times I was actually prepping for a photo shoot at the time and I was going through um, a detox very similar to what you recommend and my wife at the time was uh, goes, oh, well, if you're doing it, I'm going to do it too. Why not? Let's jump on board. I was like, okay, absolutely, let's do it. 
she was actually told as a teenager that she wouldn't be able to have babies because she had an inflammation um, problem. And so anyway, we went through the detox and everything was great. I was feeling phenomenal. Like after after you go through that first couple of days, everything starts ramping back up. It was really good. Anyway, that's actually when we fell, oh, she fell pregnant with our first daughter. And I swear I put that down to the absolute pinnacle of health that we were and everything just working so well. And it's just so proven that we live in a toxic world and this is why supporting ourselves with the right process is so important. So I'll say thank you. Well, um, you know what? I, I, I'll accept that that was a strong possibility and I love it. And whatever credit I can give for you making this world better, I love it. But so let's dive into that for a little bit. One of the things that we know is that sick animals cannot reproduce. Mm-hmm. The World Health Organization suggests that one fourth of all illness on planet Earth is due to the toxins in our environment. And so, you know, we've, we've got Oxford saying that about one in 10 women in the world are infertile. And we have all kinds of clinics popping up all over the US where now it's a big problem with the males as yeah. well. And, and so these toxins are, are horrific. Um, There's a a documentary out of Canada. It's called The Disappearing Male. And there was a tribe of Indians up there called the Amjanon. And they they had a good existence and they just, you know, lived pretty normal off the land. And Canada sold a whole bunch of land around the reservation to some petrochemical companies. Well, within a decade, the Amjanon went from about 60% male birth rate. And, and by the way, nature does give a little more men than women because we men do stupid things and die young. Um, and girls are less, less likely to do that, right? But they dropped from a 60% male birth rate down to a 33 male percent uh, birth rate. And what they found out when they dove deeply into it was that the high proportion of miscarriages in first trimester were male fetuses. Well, there's a book, there's a book entitled The Means to an End, The Biologic Basis of Aging and Death. And quite simply, it says our ultimate purpose on planet Earth is to procreate, to pass on the species. Because if everybody does it, we keep going. If nobody does it, it stops. Well, there's a number of sites along the male reproductive system that have estrogen receptors, estrogen receptor alpha, estrogen receptor beta. And in fact, now it's it's estimated that about 50% of male prostate cancer is estrogen induced and xenoestrogen induced. So when we have these toxins, they can actually completely disrupt. And in fact, the University of Study had a study that said this, they exposed male rats to a very low concentration of bisphenol A, a concentration 25,000 times less than was ever tested before. And it disrupted the entire male reproductive system in utero. So nature to me is pretty smart. If the animal cannot fill out its biologic purpose, why waste the, the means on it? Yeah. And it's taken care of. So the, the basically the animal dies in utero. Yeah. So very, very sad. But this toxic circumstance is big. Now, something that just comes to mind is when I got some genetic testing done, one of the very high chances levels, however you say it, was for myself prostate cancer. Now, this was obviously something where I looked at it. I was like, okay. And I looked at something like that. And then obviously be like, okay, well, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but genes, especially with the way epigenetics is coming out right now, it's like genes can be like a gun, but something's got to pull the trigger at the end of the day. So I have obviously been like, oh, what do I need to do day-to-day life so I don't put myself pulling that trigger? Is that right? That's exactly right. So Chris, you and I probably have similar genes, but I'll share a story. I had a young lady that was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Uh, I think she was 26 at the time, maybe 27. Wow. And it was non-operable. She was given 18 months to live. So shout out, she came to Houston, Texas to see a guy named Stanislaw Brzezinski who had a one-third cure rate with that tumor and, and beat her brain cancer. When she was in Houston, she ended up in my office, we had referred by another patient that was at Dr. Brzezinski's. That was nice. And we became good friends. But after beating the cancer, getting married on her 30th birthday, she decided to have her genetics run. And this geneticist gave her a report, and I was on the road. I was actually doing a strongman camp in Montreal with a good friend of mine, Roberto Sabatini, but she just sent me a message and and was devastated. She said, we need to talk ASVAP. I'm doomed. I'm going to die. This is horrible. 
And she sent me a recording that this geneticist had sent her with all of her different SNPs and said, yeah, you know, you're in trouble. You got bad genes. Well, baloney. Uh, when I looked at her genetics, they were almost identical to mine. Yeah. And I sent her mine. I said, you know what, sweetie? We could be brother and sister. And she said, I don't get this. You're healthy and fit. And I had brain cancer. I said, you smoked, you ate junk, you stressed, and you held a cell phone to your head for four hours a day. If I did that, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you. Yeah. But guess what? You're not doing any of those anymore. But you're right. It's epigenetics above the genes that the experts now are saying that's at least 90% of the game. Wow. So why not you know, make all the right choices and, and do everything we can to make our world better, make our bodies better. And I love that because that ties it exactly back into where we started this conversation as well as in being able to go through those seven steps and being able to become a better human being and then obviously help impact other people be better human beings. And that is what you do on a day-in, day basis. So thank you so much, Bob. I really appreciate this. Now, where does the listener go to find out more about it? you and everything that you're doing? Probably an easy site is thedrbob.com. And so I need to get better at social media. I do have a Facebook page. I have a public figure page. Um, and somehow in my daily routine, it hasn't come out to the point of, of posting regular things. My wife actually does most of it, and she's pretty good at it. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep traveling and writing, and my book's been a little bit delayed because, I, you know, maybe I'm a little bit too much of a perfectionist. But I was hoping to have it out by the fall, but we'll, we'll certainly have that one out by 2017. So, Oh, I'm going to be singing the praises of when the book comes out, so don't worry about that. I'm going to link straight over to Dr. Bob and also to the Facebook page as well. Mate, thank you so much for taking the time out. Thank you so much for sharing this. I always walk away a better human being, and I really appreciate it. No, it's mutual. Uh, I look forward to this, and you always deliver. So enjoy the beautiful day. Thanks for making our world better. Thank you so much for being here. And if you've liked this episode, please share it out and make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss out. Now, to really get the most out of you being here, go to turningproacademy.com forward slash start here. There you can get access to the free coaching guide. So if you want to know how to double or triple your clients in just a few weeks, or if you want to start and grow your online business, be sure to head on over to turningproacademy.com forward slash start here to get free access to it now. And as always, I'm so thankful for you being here and I'm really looking forward to you joining next week in the new episode.